Hello, disc golf fans, and welcome back to the third and final round, back nine coverage of the 2021 Discraft's Great Lakes Open. I'm Jeremy Colling, joined by Paul Uliberry, Big Barry, and we're here to see big things with, uh, I don't know, Eagle McMahon shooting eight down the front nine. Kyle Klein shooting seven. seven. <laughs> Just insane stuff right now, guys. Running away, really, from Adam Hammes with a five under. I mean, James Conrad shot eight down the front nine, and he's four back of Eagle from Chase Card. Front nine soft. Front nine soft. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> this it's, is not soft. No, it's incredible. What we got? Well, we're going to start with this one right here. This is a straight uphill, 55, 60 feet uphill. 360 feet, but it actually plays like 428. So we're just going to call it that. It's a low ceiling if you're going to go the backhand turnover out, but Eagle McMahon plays the hyzer. So it's not a low ceiling out there. It's wide open. It's just really ridiculously far to do that. My name is Kyle Klein. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was about 10 or 11 when I started playing. I got into it when my dad took me and my brothers out to play for the first time. A lot like everyone, they go out the first time, not very good, don't really like it very much, and then you go out a second or third time, you start learning how to throw it a little better, and then, you know, just took it and ran with it. I was 17 years old when I won the United States Amateur Championship. The previous year I played that event, gotten 15th, wasn't too happy about it. I had a vengeance. So coming to the last final holes, last couple holes of that tournament, I knew I was ahead by quite a few strokes. I didn't really have much pressure. I just said, play your game plan, what you've been doing the whole time, and you'll walk away with this tournament. If you can land just before him or just past him, you'll be money. And Kyle just absolutely crushes this one. I, this is for sure that DD3. Big round of applause for your 2019 United States Amateur Disc Golf Champion, Kyle Klein. Yesterday was, it was a great round, probably one of the best rounds I've played out here. It was just one of those days where, you know, everything was working, everything was kind of clicking together. For the front nine, I think it was five under par. Going to the back nine, I knew it was a little bit more challenging, but I knew a lot of, like, there's only a couple holes that are a little more tricky. And I was able to go six under par in the back nine and to finish 11 under. Made that last putt, pushed myself to lead card. It was a great feeling walking up the course knowing I did everything right. This course demands a lot of a lot of distance driver shots, and that's one thing I kind of pride myself on is having control of distance drivers. And another thing is circle two putting. This course is going to give you a lot of circle two putts. Today, going into the final round, tied with Eagle McMahon and Kevin Jones, it's going to be a tight one. But uh, I think if I stick to my game plan and play how I did yesterday, I think I should have a good chance to take this down. This win would mean the world to me, being kind of the, the hometown hero, if you will. I got, I've got all the Michigan crowd on my back, so it, it'd feel really nice to take this one down in front of, in front of all my fans. You heard it from Kyle. Let's take a look at his drive on hole 10. He is so right about circle two. There's just so many holes that are so hard to approach to get all the way in circle one and you're just doing something special. This drive has enough turn. Does it have enough stability? Yeah, it looks like it's gotten mm -hmm. through. Yeah, and only sitting one back. I mean, he's in position to do everything that he said in that interview. Well, he's got a double turkey rolling right now. Six straight. It's insane. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> you can't just go out and learn that. Other things you can learn. Mm -hmm. That's special. I like this shot so much. Beautiful from Adam. Great angle, height, power, all there. Kevin. Wow. That's just not going to get there, right? Yeah. No. It's rolling. 
I think. Rolling really far. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Scared it. Frustrating. He's got some bad breaks. Missed a couple of opportune putts as well. Eagle with a tough one. Finally, a, like a little tough, annoying branch is in the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just Jesus. Uh, w laughter has replaced words. That's impressive. Yeah, so is that. And that's not even the closest drive. We saw three birdies in this hole yesterday. Are we going to see it again? Yes. Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, no, no, no. And a rare misstep from Kyle Klein, the only putt we've really seen him miss all around. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Okay, well, Eagle. Yeah, let's see how he bounces back after that. Now Eagle's got a two-shot advantage. Hole 11, par 3, 370 feet. Sharp uphill Anheuser turn through these two tall trees. You just can't really get a perspective of how tall those trees are from this overhead drone. Let's see what Eagle decides to do here. Go wide. Oh man, is this gonna go is it forever? Drifting enough. Oh, okay. oh it turns too. Was that much. a mid range? Yes, I it think was. It was, and so with that, it kind of has that mid range shape of getting so high that it goes backwards, kind of. Adam's gonna go with his Undertaker. I feel like Eagle could go sidearm here. I, he's one of the few that that I, I wonder what happens if he does. And Adam's going to be in a much better spot than Eagle. I, I the way Eagle's tricky, cutting right now. Though. Yeah, I don't think Eagle's going to have a look, but I've been wrong before. And I think Adam might have a look. Kyle potentially nice answer. Yes. Yep. And that's how you bounce back after a not so stellar putt. Is you give yourself an opportunity to make a stellar putt. This is also a mid-range, I think. Yep, that's an M4. Yeah, it's going to be in the same neighborhood as Adam and Eagle. And was that Eagle? That was Eagle. Okay. Kevin. Stop it. I know. I know. It's it's tough to watch, but he's giving himself so many opportunities. I know that he's not looking at it that way where he's probably pumped up about that, but he is giving himself many chances, and that's that's asking a lot out here. Just outside the circle. Now Adam's on fuego. Yeah. Wow. Five in a row. He is not giving up, and he's going to make up a stroke here in Eagle. That's going to bring him within three. Can Kyle follow suit? Yes, he can. Good Getting that putt. stroke right back on hole 11. That is so fun for that kid. He is out here playing in front of his home state, all of his fans, and he is playing so well. I just vicariously, I'm loving this for Kyle right now. This is great. Hole 12, big uphill par three, 344 feet with nearly 70 feet in elevation, something like 60 or 70 feet. Or 51. <laughs> Toast. I, 
that's just the kind of the nature of this hole. Throwing hyzer uphill on a flat tee is actually extremely difficult. Yeah, somebody asked me this round. Oh, Kyle just laces this one. Beautiful. Once again, man. Somebody asked me, would I rather tee off uphill or downhill? And I said, well, that just depends on the hole. If the hole's going uphill, I want to match the grade of the shot. I want to tee off going uphill. And the same for going down. Eagle's going to be out there near Emerson Keith throwing range. And Kyle's got an opportunity to tie things up. Skip. Kevin working that angle, getting a great skip forward. He's going to have to earn it from circle's edge, low ceiling. Obstructed. It's, he's due. I'm going to call it. He's making it. Adam, that's not the greatest approach he's ever thrown. Tough spot here, it looks like. Yeah, maybe not quite in that free reign to run it type of position, but able to nestle that one up there for the par. <laughs> of course, and now it's windy for Kevin. Yeah, it's one of those days. But there it is. And like you said, it's just... He's just due. You give him that many opportunities. He might not be having the best putting day, but he's also ha hasn't missed like a bunch of easy putts. They've all been challenging. Good Sp pup, Adam. Speaking of challenging, great par. Just a matter of time for Kevin to make one. Mm -hmm. Kyle. Eight down in the past nine holes. Unreal. One of the things I like to tell myself on the course is you can't miss them all. That one miss from Kyle inside the circle. Yeah, it's a good one. Honestly, and, and Terry Miller has a great adage as well. He likes to say it's never too late for a birdie. I like that a lot. It really, it's great to remind yourself. I mean, you might not be playing well. It might be time to say, I don't want to be on the course anymore, but guess what? You can still keep fighting and the birdie's never going to hurt your score. Hole 13, Paul. Unless it's a 12-footer for Eagle. <laughs> you want to talk? 526 feet. Impossible angle, essentially. Forehand down the hill. Sometimes we see rollers. Backhand turnover line is kind of there. Any sort of birdie look is just a bonus. I think all of these guys are going sidearm. I would love to see one of them lace it. Come on, buddy. This is going to hit this early tree, I believe and knock it straight down. That's a pretty standard approach, but not what Kyle needed right there. He wants to get up there in that long jump putt range. His putter has been so hot today. Kevin flipping it up. If you can do it, that's the type of shot, and that tree behind just, oh, destroying what could have been one of the best drives we've seen on hole 12 or 13, formerly hole 12. Well, now Adam knows what to do. Just Low driving tee shot that flips up a little bit. This is high. This could work. But I like the width. I like that shot. For the more overstable shot, it just catches every time that tree this year has caught them all. Yeah. If that tree were to just get cut down, then I wouldn't say anything about it. It's just, you can't see it from the tee, and it just blocks that perfect entry. Too much hyzer. Agreed. And he gets to the right side. That's if, if he gets far enough to the right, it's fine. But there is a spot that makes it really tricky in there. It's one spot. Mm -hmm. And it's a doozy. Kyle... A little frisky. He's going for it, I think. Yeah, I mean, we did mention that that was another one of those green light go opportunities with this basket. Kind of in the uh, the middle of a bowl. Eagle found that spot. Oh, yeah, he did. Wow. <laughs> and that's cutting backwards. He's been putting well, but man, that's not that's not an easy putt for par. No, but he hasn't 
Whoa. He hasn't missed any, not one. Not one this whole time. Yeah, I mean, when he's when he's gone for a putt, he has made it. Come on, Kev. Ah. Good drive, though. All right, heat check. Tie ball game up on top of the leader if this guy. Oh, no. Well, Kyle, he can take a one-shot lead if he makes oh, this. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Oh, <sighs> give me that. And he's in. So Kyle captures the lead with just five holes to go. How do you got, How do you catch a guy who's essentially playing perfect and makes one mistake? One mistake. I, I uh. mean... Kyle, <laughs> birdied, hats off, buddy. You birdie nine of the first ten holes, and then you go one over in the next three, you're like, okay, cool. I'm still in first place, but not if you're Eagle McMahon right now. Wow. What a gutsy par save from Kyle, knowing that the door was open. Adam Hammes hanging in there still with that par. Kevin, not so much, but he is still... Got an opportunity to, to finish strong in this event. Talk us through hole 14, Paul. Driving range. Just throw it as far as you can in any direction. <laughs> and then you're going to be able to throw putter for this group up to the top here. Into this little cove, if you will. It's a cove? Yeah, kind of a little cove in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no water, but... You can throw in any direction. There is an out-of-bounds line that separates hole 3 and 14, and it's not out-of-bounds in hole 14. You can throw it any direction you want. See, you can even throw it at the, the friendly spectators. Throw it on hole 15's fairway and you're in bounds. Kyle doesn't like it, but the angle's okay over there, and he got plenty of distance. Yeah, he's just fine. Yeah. Uh, Smoke show. Blasted. Wow, that went far on Heiser. And we, we talked a little bit about a little bit about it on the front nine, how Eagle looks like he puts zero effort into his tee shots. That was an example of Kevin Jones going full send and looking like he's actually trying to throw far. There's two people that I know of currently that when they throw it as hard as they can, both feet in their follow through come off the ground with the momentum of their throw, not just twirling in a follow through, right? Yeah. And that's Kevin Jones and Anthony Barilla. And it's, those okay. two just throw it so hard. Garrett kind of does a... Oh, is it Eagles? Garrett, too. Yeah, sorry. Thanks for reminding me of that. Eagle goes a little bit left. Yeah, Garrett kind of has this little... If you watch him in slow motion, he gets low, and he really uses his legs to drive upwards, and he kind of, like, bounces when he throws, and his timing is impeccable. Eagle's in a tough spot left. I said you can throw it wherever you want. Don't throw it left. <gasps> Don't throw it left. Kyle Klein, no. Some nice words of encouragement from the gallery, but that might not be enough. Kyle is in a very tough spot. Adam with an opportunity. Squandered. That is a big time mistake right there from Adam. Kevin, don't roll backwards. Yes, roll forwards. Yeah, I was just going to say, this guy's not getting any love. For course, that has a lot of grass out here. There seems to be so many situations where people are kind of getting bad breaks. There's That was what? fortunate. Just right oh. past that bush, oh, one inch to the left, and that's a no-go. Those, those bushes are normally Jerry Rice for me. Like Those things just have never dropped a single pass that I've ever thrown it. Kyle. Not looking like a bright future from there. Oh. But he's out. Okay. He's not going to. Yeah. That is saying a lot. There are some places in there that you do not get out. All right, Kev. Nice birdie. It's, it's kind of crazy to watch a man and... and we can all recognize that Kevin's not ha brought his A game today, and he's still four under with a bogey. You know, it's like that's how good he is. Four under, and the score is a very respectable 
score for most players. And for him, we're thinking, oh, man, what a bad day it is for him. Sure, he's not going to win the title, but he's still such a great disc golfer that he's still able to put together a good round. It shows you how good these other players are playing. I mean, when a great player like Kevin looks, you know, like the weaker player on the card for this round, mm -hmm. it's saying a lot because he's beaten most of the field yeah. still. And he's on pace to beat the field by lots. Eagle bouncing right back, getting the birdie on 14, tying things up once again with Kyle. On to the devastating hole 15, the hardest hole on the course, right after the easiest hole on the course, 14. 4.5 average, and that's because it is hard to tell as if it's a par four or par five. They say it's a par four, but it is so hard to get there in two. We saw Eagle do it yesterday by playing that obscure play, that big hyzer over the trees into two's fairway, and then another big hyzer from there. Let's see if Kevin decides to go down the design fairway. And it looks like that's what he's trying here. Oh, that's great. Good shot. Yeah, that, that'll give him a play into the green for mm -hmm. sure. It plays far from there. And Eagle's got a different disc in his hand than he did in round two. I wonder if he's changing his play up a bit. It, yes, he is. And that's not the greatest skip. If that skips left, he's in a good spot. But that kind of got the counter skip. Not much there. This is wide. Needs to hurry. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Tough. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. He's gonna have sidearm pitch out to the middle, then get up and down from about three hundred. This is more what you're looking for for aggressive play, pushed forward, then the height. Yep. Yeah, but I still think even if you're sacrificing a bit of distance just to get left like Kevin has, that's the prime spot. You really are tucked out, tucked away from the fairway so much on this right side. Really, that's all you can do is just pitch a hyzer sidearm around the corner. But Kyle knows that that's okay because Eagle's out of position as well. Caught a little bit of high foliage. You're yeah, getting better. Thanks, You're man. so close to getting it. But that's going to be tricky from there. Probably almost a guaranteed bar, though. Eagle, a little wide. Hmm. And that should be okay. It's really not that dangerous. In years past, all that thick stuff on the left had been out of bounds. Wow. But let's remember, that's going to be on, for sure a standstill from where Eagle is, I feel like. Yep. I'm guessing this is, yeah, this yeah, is so Eagle. This is a standstill. To have a swing of that is is good. That's called being six foot four. He's really good at being six foot four. Okay. Scary. Yes, it is. Spooky, spooky. <laughs> yes. That is a death putt. Yep, and Kyle doesn't have a death putt. He's got a tap in. Opportunity. Huh, he landed right on a path. And had to jump putt over a 60-foot tall tree and able to do that well. So he'll have a par, from, par putt from inside 20 feet. From 90? Adam. Look for the three. Lucky he didn't hit the coos and come all the way back to him, honestly. Now this putt is absolutely huge for Eagle. Daunting. Oh. Dude, this guy is just an... He, I was going to say he's an animal, but he's an eagle. So, yeah, I, I would be right if I were to say that. This man is a predatory bird. It's just the way he can step up to those putts. Knock him down. It's incredible. All right. 
we have to do it. Unbelievable shout out. Unbelievable shout out. Corey Ellis, three for three, three under on hole 15. Ready to all three rounds. That is insane. Mind blowing. Insane stuff. Congratulations for that. That is ridiculous. Hole 16, 396 feet. Eh, not quite. This is the flattest hole in the course, and it's still a 20 foot elevation drop. I've been trying to flex the M4. Doesn't quite get enough turn on it, but because he missed his line, he's actually benefiting with a pretty much wide open 40-foot putt. There was a sneaky wind at the bottom of this little goalie going from right to left. So people were thinking it was going to drift right, but then it ended up fading left. Eagle going away from the forehand play, Ooh. going far left and window open. Opportunity here for Kyle. Big moment here. Oh, I don't think he is liking that. And no, now he definitely isn't liking oh, that. Oh, that's a no green light, no go. Yeah, there's the two biggest goalies in the entire world are standing right in front of his. Adam, however, he Perfect. is throwing. That's fantastic. He is a very good disc golfer, Adam. He plays well. I have noticed. Wow, I didn't think Eagle could be in a position where he had a tough par approach, but man, he was in a very difficult spot. Tricky from here. Yeah. Another tester from the knee with the breeze from the knees. Does it with ease. Those were the breeze knees. <laughs> Cut. Well done from Kevin. And it sounded like he was doing a little bit of math there with UDisc Live and checking in on who he's got by a certain number of strokes, who he's trying to chase. So important to be aware. Eight under for Adam, and he's just not anywhere near these guys, really. I mean, what? with two. What? Oh, wait, no, two strokes. What? With the birdie there, oh, they he's just two parred. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wow. he's certainly within. He's two back with two to go. I mean. How'd that happen it, so fast? It just happens <laughs> when two guys take a par and you take the only birdie on the card. I mean, Adam. anything. Can, yeah, Adam. Exactly. It looked like he may have been out of it, but he is certainly not. He's just sneakily birdieing all the stuff. And 17, this is a tough hole, folks. It is long and it is narrow. You have to play that hyzer or the turnover drive off the tee and you have to stay in bounds from there. It is always a difficult landing zone. No matter where you where your drive finishes, you're gonna have awkward footing to this uphill approach. To a green that's guarded on the left side the entire way and the right side. This is gonna be yeah, this has gotta get down. I don't think it's gonna get down in no time. Chance. Okay. Oh, that's, that's uh it's over. That door just shut hard. It, if Kyle and Eagle can get their drive and bounds, I that might have been Adam's chance. Has anyone ever really worked the Heiser flip the way Kevin does? Mm. With the power. I don't think so. I mean, there's been plenty of angle geniuses throughout the history of disc golf, but he is he's able to get so much power with such a wide range of stabilities. He definitely has a unique way of throwing. Speaking of unique way of throwing, I'd like to introduce Eagle McMahon. That is bizarre. 
That's where the long drives landed when we were playing from the tee box that was 100 feet farther. Big moment here. We saw both of these guys flip it up too much in rounds past. Yeah, and these are the two guys that have gotten up and down from the road. It's kind of interesting to think about. These I'm, are the two guys I'm throwing tied. it on the road next time. <laughs> yeah. Is next that all year? it takes? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be able to get up and down as well. That's the hard part. Crap. Do I sense a flashback match play? Big moment for Kyle. This is... 340 feet. Plays like three th or 430. Right around there, I'm guessing. Four, yeah, probably 430 because he went straight hyzer. Yeah, it's playing far. Oh, that's a good looking shot. Get down quick. Get down quick. Oh, yeah. That's a good shot. Absolutely. Pressure on Eagle now. Yeah, that that needed to be in or at least the par save, but that's not a par save. No. But either way, you, you're just not getting two shots on Eagle on hole 18. That's just... Or Kyle. Yeah, correct. But, I mean, Eagle has played hole 18 five times, and he's never parred it. He's birdied it all five times he's played it. Look at this shot. Wow. Okay. Well done, Kevin Jones. It's never too late to get a birdie. This is tough. He's going flex sidearm. Opening, he is opening up the fairway. That looks like it has a lot of angle. Wow, that is stable. That's a splice. Yeah. Ooh. Advantage. Out, outside the circle. Advantage Kyle. Right behind a bush. Kyle. Hometown kid. Kyle. He's trying to prove that he's a local. I wouldn't believe it first round, but now I'm starting to think maybe he is. He kind of knows the track, knows the spots, <laughs> knows the road trick. Well, we didn't mention at all that he was the U.S. champion here, uh, the U.S. amateur champion back in 2019. I kind of completely forgot about that. Yeah, he has winning memories here. Eagle. Match play moment. Big putt. Jeez. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Wow. Such an animal. <laughs> it's so Ice good. cold. <laughs> and it is so hot in Michigan, and he is just freezing cold. Ice water through his veins. Yeah, he loves it. Oh, Kyle's outside the circle. I thought he was inside the circle. Yeah, but he's been making these all day. Kyle to remain tied. Oh, wow. And that's what happens with match play. One yeah, person has the advantage. he didn't want to let it go. There was something going on with his footing. Yeah, I think he had an awkward stance there. Yeah, I think he likes to do that step forward, and he just, you know, maybe hadn't practiced that straight uphill. Fuck, it's... Great birdie, Kevin Jones. Yeah, that second hyzer that he threw was nasty. Yeah, it was. Not I, over. No, not by a long shot. I mean, Eagle's never thrown it even in the circle on the next hole. But it's crazy to think five consecutive pars for Kyle right now, and he's just won back. His opportunities were the last five holes. And now he's going to have to do something amazing and hope that Eagle doesn't do what he's done every single time he's ever played hole 18. That's toboggan. Par three, 315 feet. And who knows how many feet in elevation? 52 feet makes this hole... So far, you need 75 to 80 mile an hour arm speed to be able to get your sidearm up this hill. And 
All of these guys have that and more. Kevin in the circle. That is a that's a big shot. Kevin loves this course. He's been in lead card final round like every time. Eagle high, wide, hysering into the spot that he stood one year ago today on a different date. <laughs> but whenever we played this tournament, and he made that putt from Chase Card to win this tournament. Oh, what a moment this is. This is cool. Great line. Skip. Great shot. So I think Eagle's actually going to be away. Adam inside. So much power with that sidearm. Okay. That's going to be near Kyle's drive. He'll be first. Corey Ellis in the clubhouse at 24 under par. Adam needs this putt to tie for third place. I just never really gave it a chance. And we mentioned that Eagle's gotten, he's five down on this hole, five tries. We did not mention that not one of his drives has ever been in the circle. Five for five outside the circle to win the 2021 D Glow. Has a good memory even from the last hole. Chills. Oh, he loves it. Wow. Have you ever seen Eagle so pumped? Wow. He is riding high on emotion, and why not? Oh. And the home crowd will have to wait another year for Kyle Klein, but, man, what a performance he's put on and just potentially only one more putt left. That's his fourth Pro Tour win this season. Yes. Yeah, yep, perfect. What an ending. What a performance from Kyle Klein. Fully emerged. He's here. He's here to stay. Yep. What a rapid ascent, too. I mean, he, he didn't win this tournament, but look at that moment there, going over and congratulating Eagle, letting him know. He's got nothing but respect for him. A bit deflating there for Kev, but it truly was a good performance for Kevin. Adam with another consistent round, consistent tournament. Mm -hmm. Fourth place. Ladies Ty. and gentlemen, your 39th annual Discraft Great Lakes Open champion and defending champion, Eagle McMahon. Appreciate it. Eagle McMahon, congratulations on back-to-back -back victories here at the Great Lakes Open. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Uh, it's honestly unreal how it's shaped up. I can't believe I had the same putt to win the tournament. Like, uh, again, I didn't keep track of the scores. Uh, I had an insane start. I was nine under through 10 or something crazy like that. I thought that was gonna be like enough to do it, but I couldn't keep Kyle off. It's like, okay, I have a two or three stroke lead, but then he, he birdied, then I bogeyed, and I'm like, come on, really? I was like, I've put in so much work 
for him to be this close. I thought I was gonna run away with it. At one point, I just was like, ah, this doesn't feel very good. It feels stagnant throwing so many scramble shots. But I knew the last two holes, you know, if I, if I birdied them both, it's gonna give me a really good chance, put the pressure on Kyle. The one thing I'll say is, Kyle, you need to get your own shirt because you're not winning when you're wearing mine. <laughs> I was standing right next to you before your putt on 17 and your deep breath gave me the chills. How do you collect yourself before a 45 footer staring straight down the hill like that? It, it takes time. It takes time to you know, gain the confidence. It takes practice. It takes putting yourself in the position over and over again because I remember when I was there for one of the first times, I was definitely missing that putt. It was probably gonna hit the basket, roll down the hill. But you know, just by repetition and then having a healthy respect for the game, you know, you can, uh, you can re recreate it. You know, winning doesn't owe, owe you anything. You know, you'll grab the win, but you know, it's anyone else's next week. So you gotta keep grinding it out. You know, just keeping that focus is so key. Looking back on past, uh, it, past performances, like that putt right there, I, I hit that outside the circle putt last year for the win. And then funny thing is every round I hit that same putt. It honestly feels unreal, but I'm very proud of myself. Proud to do it with a brand new Discmania P2 and uh, you know, this is, this is incredible. I've come too far to come this far. Like, if I just stop now, like, what's the point? So, you know, I wanna, I wanna get better. There's so many parts of my game that I feel like I can still improve upon my consistency. I'm, I wanna track down a USDGC or a world title. Like, this is great practice for it, uh, but, you know, at the World Championship, I felt a little lackluster. I still had a good finish, but, you know, seeing James Conrad throwing that shot, I wanna be someone who uh, does those incredible things. And, uh, you know, I think it, it starts here. FaceTime dad. Dude. Insanity. Like we see you hanging around for us so much. I, I couldn't believe it. When I got the last birdie of my stretch and Kyle missed it for a second, I thought like, I, I, I broke him finally. It took him that so long, but then he goes and birdies the next two and then I get that bogey. Oh, I think the way you finished that out is the best you've ever done. I mean, just the clutch, the clutch, that, that's clutch. That is clutch. And I was just thinking back to 303 when he hit that putt and I missed it. I was like, that cannot happen again. The putting was absolutely insane. That's with a brand new putter. It's so hard to keep going. That's the thing, I'm just like, how? You held him off. It's unbelievable, dude. That's like, I think it's your best win. Winning mentality? Yeah. I feel like that's the one thing we can take away from that interview is this kid doesn't care about your feelings. Yeah. He doesn't care about how good you are, yep. where you came from, what you've done. His memories of you are bad. <laughs> yes. And he he's won't hold him against yeah, you. Yeah, and he's going to hold him against you and he's going to let it motivate him. And that is when you have the work ethic of him, the talent that he has, the natural ability that he has. Yep. Good it's, luck. It's the art of the win, and he understands the art of the win. It's his middle name. Founders Club, we see you. Thank you. Eagle McMahon. Hats off, man. What a performance. Four so, disc golf pro tour wins this, this season. Six outside the circle that round. It's unbelievable. Congratulations. Wow. That is incredible, man. Well, that's going to wrap it up from here in Milford, Michigan. We'll see you next week over there at the Preserve. He, LaVisca. I think that Eagle might have hurt his shirt sales. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys. <laughs> see you next time.